right, are we ready? I'm ready. Oh, it just feels so weird. It does feel very weird. It does feel weird. All these like two 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 false starts. Like I'm now I'm just like self conscious. Oh no. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't all <laughs> all starts are valid. There is no false start. Especially this one. This is the every <laughs> FNF podcast, baby. How's it going, guys? Chris, are we recording? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, everyone's recording. Are you recording? <laughs> yeah, I'm just making sure. Love it. You love to see it and hear it. We're coming at you live <laughs> from the Every FNFF podcast. Uh, guys, how you been this week? Uh, not bad. Oh, we didn't introduce been... ourselves last week, so let's make sure we do it this time. Oh, did no, we not? Yeah. Oh, I that forgot makes sense. who I am. I <laughs> forgot what everything is. You know. Yeah, Except hot chip. <laughs> well, I am Curtis. I'm Carl. I'm Alex. In case you forgot and you are the listener thank you and we love that about you thank you it's like um at the end of like rpgs when the credits come up and the last credit is and you and like, <laughs> i did have a part in making this game you're right the most executive of all our producers the player <laughs> the humble humble gamer, the humble gamer. <laughs> there's no such thing as a humble gamer for yeah, it's true <laughs> that's, yeah um, absolutely not okay i'm gonna start with announcement time because i'm excited what's up Ooh. and it's all right oh so yeah, this is like if if we were in normal not hell world right now, we would say, "Oh, hey, I have a show coming up," or "Oh, hey, I'm doing this," or blah blah blah, or whatever. Anyway, by the time that you hear this episode, the newest Homestuck album will be out, and I wrote a song on that. So go listen to it. It's on the Homestuck yeah. Bandcamp, Bandcamp.com/slash/Homestuck. Uh, the album is Beyond Canon, and I wrote the song Home Team Advantage. Hell yeah. That was and, good. Uh, yeah. So I really liked it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, me too. Uh, I think earlier oh, today you. you you sent out a tweet like announcing that and saying like, hey, I did something. And I like just clicked it and I was talking to my girlfriend, Sarah, and I was like, oh, do you want to hear Curtis's new song? And uh, she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I gave her, you know, a little rundown about it and I hit play, but it was at the top of the album, like the, the first track on oh, it. Yeah. And I was like... I was like, wow, Curtis really did something different here. This doesn't sound like pretty much anything. And I was like, who did he have singing on this? This is wild. I am to understand that the first track has Hatsune Miku as a singer. <laughs> oh, okay. Is it a is it a, actually a Vocaloid? Because I, I was wondering so. that. I was like, because yeah. I've I've been really tempted to buy uh, a Vocaloid. And I a definitely have Hats- Vocaloid Four on my computer. <laughs> oh my god, fuck yeah! Does it have Hatsune Miku on it? I don't actually. I bought um, okay. Asuka and Machi. Which are two that nice. like came together and they kind of have like complementary tones. Nice. Anyway, yeah. Well, I've good. got KK Slider on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> the true, the the, the on true your island? MVP. He's the uh, a vocal aid for the fur community. Hell yeah. <laughs> I need. I still need to get him on my island. I'm slacking. Dude, come on. I know it's fine. You're you're too busy playing other games. Yeah. Like Final Fantasy 1. Hell yeah. And that's the only Final Fantasy game I'm playing right now. That's the only Final Fantasy game that anybody's talking about as far as I know. Yeah, exactly. Everyone loves that that game. I know. Uh, all it's I keep game. hearing about is a uh, red their 13th red mage that they've made. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to saying this game. he's a, a good boy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so yeah. there's one less lich in the world right now. There is. Yeah. We're down. We're down. We're down one from one. <laughs> that liches got stitches. That's right. Yeah. That lich got stitch. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to just. That Lilo got stitch. <laughs> that Lilo got stitch. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're off to a crescent, crescent, not island, crescent lake. Crescent lake. Yeah. Yeah. So what is a what is a lake but a, a reverse island? <laughs> <laughs> I I really have to sit down and think about that for a little while. Like that's a little too scarily accurate. Curtis, I'm looking directly at you. You're already sitting down. <laughs> Bye. So we get here. <laughs> so so we get to Crescent Lake. So as you told us last week, uh, we go from the the Devil's Tail and goes directly west, which should take us right. around the Earth, uh, right to the port just east yep. of Crescent Lake. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and and we were talking um, last week about how the map uh, definitely like scrolls around. So if you go north, you end up south, and all of that, and west east, obviously. Um, and it's funny because I remember talking about how when I was like trying to go through the dungeon last week, I would get I'd have to go all the way back to my boat, then go to Melmond, and like 
stop at the inn so I could make the trek back to uh, what's it called, Cornelia, yeah. just so I could use yeah. like the the revive services and Shit everything. Sucks. And then I realized that Provoca is actually much closer if you just oh, really? go to the west and then you're just right there at the dock. <laughs> That's amazing. That's awesome. It's like a yeah, it's a dock that we've seen earlier, but we just can't. Uh, like access it with the ship until we get the canal and all of that. Yeah, because but, we were um, on the yeah. inside sea and not the outside, right? Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. so I was just like, I was like, shit, I wasted so much oh, time. Well, I guess it's not awesome. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, what is this game but a a waste of a lot of time? <laughs> it's a test and patience. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of lessons to be learned. Uh, um. So yeah, another thing I noticed about this game is uh, the docks are really far away from the town sometimes. Which yep. uh, seems like a very odd place to build a dock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why do they do that? Yeah, um, they built the town first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They built yeah. the town first, and then they built boats, and they're like, "Shit!" <laughs> <laughs> it's like my Animal Crossing town where I have my my house way far away from like anything I need. I'm like, "Shit!" Yeah, I, I like the idea that like when you're building a town, the first thing you want to build is boats. <laughs> <laughs> you're trekking for five days, and you're like, "Do you guys validate parking?" <laughs> it's the opposite of what Cortez did when he yeah. burned all those boats. That yeah. fucking asshole. Um, fuck that guy. Stands to the pot. <laughs> fuck Cortez. Yeah, I know, yeah. Fucking murderer. We took a real strong stance there. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all uh, fight any weird shit on this side of the map? Cobras and trolls. I got anacondas. Cobras and trolls. Oh uh-huh, yeah, scorpions. Uh, a thing called an ankheg, which looks like a kind of a real buff like millipede. Hmm. Yeah, so um, I'm seeing that on the fandom now. Um, a jacked my game, millipede, just literally... like a whole bunch of flex. <laughs> it just flexes a hundred times. <laughs> right. It just got a bunch of fucking kettlebells. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn, it is mean as shit looking. Yeah, yeah. these things are scary. Um, I, I don't even remember if they're particularly hard, but I ran into them um, and there was like four of them and I was just like, oh fuck this. And in my game, they're just called uh, centipedes. Okay. Okay. But they're the same thing. I, for some reason, I don't know where. Yeah, the, same exact thing. I don't know where the name Ankheg comes from. A N K H E G. But yeah, I don't know, it, and that's not like a, any kind of like Final Fantasyism either. I don't think, right, Curtis? Not that I know of. I'm not familiar with other enemies called Ankheg, or at least that don't have like mascotish status. Oh, it's from D and D, apparently. Oh, that actually makes perfect <laughs> sense. <laughs> Final yeah, Fantasy One has something from D and D. Absolutely not. I can't believe it. <laughs> So maybe well, they're called uh, centipedes in Carl's version, and called Ankhegs in mine and Curtis's. Okay. If I actually, I didn't run into them, so I'm not sure actually. So. Yeah, like we don't actually need to run into any of these enemies. I kind of did it because I started like exploring, and then I saw four of them, and I was like, "Whoa, fuck this! <laughs> <laughs> I'm too far from down for this shit." <laughs> but yeah, uh, once we walk a little ways, we actually do see a uh, a lake in the shape of a crescent. <laughs> so yeah. kind of gives away what might be there. Hell and yeah. uh yeah, inside's a little town. Um there's there's kind of like it's kind of like a um north to south town. There's a little bit more stretch that direction than east west. Uh so when I first got onto the screen, I only saw one NPC and I was like, is this it? Is there just this one guy in town? And he just says He's like, like Yeah, what's up? He's like, Good luck, Light Warriors, you can do it. <laughs> I was like, Bless Hell. the crystals. Bless the <laughs> bless the crystals. Um but I went to the weapon shop. And uh, you remember how we had that whole episode in Final Fantasy VII season about the ultimate weapons? Yes. No. Time to talk about some ultimate weapons, y'all. Hell yeah. So what are we on? Episode 8, episode 9 of Final Fantasy I. Uh, so the white mage's best weapon in the game is here. <laughs> the oh, silver yeah. hammer. Yep. Oh, okay. So mithril hammer in my game. It's okay, yeah. the okay. best weapon for the... Yeah, it doesn't get better. <laughs> but nice. I mean, it's it's pretty good. It, I, I will it is say pretty that good. Obviously, the um, white mage's strong suit is not going to be attack anyway. So right. there are other weapons that the white mage can get and hold on to in their inventory, like their weapon inventory, that you can use to cause effects later. So like the white mage might get a staff that like c- casts heal two or something like that and like, even though it doesn't have better attack or better stats equipped you can give the white mage that and keep it in their um equipment and then they can just use it as an item and it'll cast those spells so they'll still get more weapons to deal on but yeah because i did notice yeah. that in the battle um there is like the option to find your uh 
your uh what's it called your like equipment and i i haven't yeah. done anything with that i kind of just i think like final fantasy 7 has scared me away from that with the throw right. thing where i'm like mm. i don't want to throw right. this useless staff that i found in a dungeon that was kicking my ass and i fought <laughs> tooth and nail to get to the fucking chest well, we won't we won't have it here um but coming up maybe next episode uh, maybe the one after that We'll have a a pair of gauntlets that cast like bolt three or some shit, and so like you can just use this every single turn on one of Holy your characters shit. for the rest of the game and just be casting bolt three every battle. <laughs> that sounds amazing. So, it's something like that. I, I could be wrong, but we'll get we'll get there when we get there. But um, but yeah. So a couple weapons. It's all all mithril equipment here. Yeah, um, it's pretty good. And uh, some magic as usual. Oh, what do you, yeah. what do you, what are y'all feeling like today? Black magic first or white magic first? Let me see what I can pull up in my uh, in my notes first. Ooh, yeah, I up. forgot what I have in, uh, but I did see in the I, white magic shop. Um, nice, I have that one pulled up as well. Nice. <laughs> okay, I got um, Stona over here, which I'm not. I think that does that cure stone that's, uh, or cu- yep cast stone. Yeah, okay. cure that. Uh, that's uh, Link's horse. Oh, Estona. Estona. Yeah. <laughs> um, exit, which I think is like that kind of uh, escapes dungeons, I think. Yeah, but we can't get it yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that was we, a real fucking punch, yeah, punch to the gut yeah. for me. <laughs> That's for like. I was a, so excited about that. We'll be able to get it. Soon so, enough. what's the reason? With a white mage, or is that the kind of. Uh, or is a white wizard? Is white the, wizard. There's only a, a white wizard that can use it. Yeah. I don't even know what that is, though. We can't talk about that. Yeah, what is that? I don't know what the white wizard is. I have no idea. Where am I going to find one of those? <laughs> then we also have uh, Proterra. Okay, so in my game, it's Fog 2. For some reason, <laughs> Protect is Fog. Increases evasiveness, I'm guessing. Uh, increases defense. Okay. Defense, yeah. This um, is so, fucking necessary, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I picked this one up. It's called Shield 2 in my version okay. of the game. And then uh, the other one is Invis 2, which uh, I think is just raises evasion. Invis 0 over here. Okay. Uh, what's great about uh, these spells, Fog and Invis, they stack with themselves. So you oh, can just shit. consistently... So like in Final Fantasy VII, if you had the shell status or the protect status, you just had the status. But yeah. in this, it's almost like Pokemon rules where like you up your defense by a certain level and then you can keep going up to a certain extent. Wow. So oh, yeah. you can like really stack on the defense if you want. So it's like in the first generation of Pokemon? Is that per user or the whole party? The uh, the twos do the whole party. Wow. So you can get it real fast. Yep. Super righteous spells there. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, that m- makes me feel like I definitely need to pick up one of those because... I think I do already have shield too because I was like, this is the whole party and it and it raises defense and I had done a little bit of level grinding like before this. Just actually, no, I guess I didn't. I, I must have had to do it <laughs> afterwards. I think after I picked this up after I did level grinding because the enemies that were coming up on just fucking wreck you. They do a lot of damage. Yeah, <laughs> they're kind so of. I was mean. like, oh, I'm gonna pick that up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I like about the black magic, I mean, I don't like about the black magic, frankly. Is that just two of the spells are both instant KO spells and they just never work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so what a waste. Yeah. Uh, one of them in mine is rub, <laughs> or, which I think <laughs> is like kill. In oh, the, we talked about games. that one, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Because Astos casts it very first turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other uh, yeah, one. Yeah, that's Reaper in mine. Yeah, so you remember how, like, you got. You were talking about how poison is not a poison status spell it's a one hit ko yeah yeah yeah. Uh, that affects the whole party yeah yeah so there's quake quake is the same thing but with earth like elemental Mm -hmm. but it's a one hit ko it doesn't do damage which is weird so i guess like the rationale behind that is if uh if there's like flying enemies that you're fighting and you try to use quake it's not gonna ever hit them instead of just probably never hitting them i don't know i really don't know yeah, kind but, of a waste of a magic slot, um, especially when you have poison. For sure, for sure. Um, there's stun, which can give the enemy paralysis. The boss that we're going to talk about today can be stunned. <laughs> An odd Shit. fact. Um, and then a necessary spell. Necessary. Lightning mm-hmm. three. Yep, bolt three. Oh, or uh, I guess Thundaga, maybe, on the newest one. Maybe. Uh, yeah, but that is that is a juicy necessary spell by that one uh when we get to the sunken temple it is going to wreck shop <laughs> hell yeah so that's gonna be where it's at coming up hell yeah um, very necessary 
So uh, what about what about the rest of this town? Any, any- Real quick, I do want to mention that uh, the thing I don't like about the magic in this town is that every single spell costs 20,000 20, gil. 20,000, <laughs> yeah. Like ins- that's cheap. like two record um, 15 puzzles <laughs> for each spell. Well, that's fucking okay, insane. So let, me, let me ask you, because um, cause I remember talking about how this game ends up being pretty generous with money. Like, yeah. how are you doing money-wise right now in the game? Uh, I mean, it's usually, I feel like money is pretty balanced in the sense that when I get to a town, I usually have enough to buy some things, but then I'm like, oh, I really want all of this magic, but it's, you know, 20k, right. like, so then I have to go and level grind for a little bit and go back, like, th- I had to make a couple return trips to get everything that I okay. wanted, which is, I I mean, that's not, I think just the fact that the, the like, there's so many zeros is, like, intimidating, but, like, yeah. we're fighting enemies that'll drop, like, 900 gil if you kill them, and they'll roll up and, like squads of like two well, we, sometimes i'll say yeah 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 exactly so i was gonna say like when i got here i had enough to buy everything that i needed for this dungeon pretty much re- ready to go and yeah. once i left the dungeon i had enough to buy the rest of everything that was here so yeah i mean and we'll talk about it too this dungeon has a lot of gill just in it just like treasure yeah. chests yeah. so like a whole lot <laughs> yeah yeah very much so yeah <laughs> yeah we will get to that there's a bunch of like weird things i noticed about it too so <laughs> yeah yeah um all right what what else you guys got anything cool uh, uh so i think there's two people in this town i talked to um one of them is just uh complaining about her husband because mm-hmm. she okay. says my husband's always traveling and in the little time he is home he sleeps all day I think he needs to get his priorities straight. Damn. And then up on the north corner of the town, there's just a guy sleeping next to a gravestone. I think that's yep. him. <laughs> I mean, men do be sleeping. I just hate how he's always sleeping in the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> he's just getting he's getting prepped for being dead. He's like, it's his tombstone. He's just like, I'm just getting used to it. Hell yeah. Breaking it in. <laughs> it's a nice day. It's yeah. a, a whomst amongst us moment. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, uh, um, I was I was kind of wandering around. I was like, oh, that's it. And then I um, like the way that towns work in this game, which I'm sure we've talked about before, is uh, there'll be at least in our version of it, me and Alex's version. There's like really like beautiful sprites, and it's you know outside of the range of view, so you'll see like grass and everything. And when you walk a certain amount, um, there'll just be like an invisible barrier that when you hit it, you're back on the world map, and it'll just take you right back to the front. Yeah, most of the towns have like a brick wall around it, which it, yeah. It, to us, we would assume like, okay, maybe two or three squares past that is when we go to the world map. Yeah, exactly. But so, in this town, there is a um, an exception to that rule, where yeah. I think if you head uh, northeast, um, you can actually cross a river outside the um, the town limits, and then there's like a little. Um, there's like a wooded area, and yeah, like a little, little wooded, a little wooded bridge. area. Is, is this what a copse is? Copse. Copse. How do you spell that? <laughs> it's C-O-P-S-E. A small group of trees, I guess. I, that's a new <laughs> word for me, so. <laughs> okay. Well, that's I've a word. I've heard that I... they're all bastards, though. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say that's a word I know, but it's not really a word I know because I don't know how to pronounce it or exactly what it is. Yeah. But I've, I, I... I've heard it d- describing an area like this, which I guess this is a small grouping of trees. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that makes sense. So... Yeah, but an um, obvious joke can be made about you know seeing a forest through it, but we're gonna um, not do that. Yeah. Instead, we're just gonna go through it because uh, uh, there's like a little path, a little grass path that you go through. And this was kind of a good moment um, for me because I was just kind of like following it along. I was expecting to get back out to the uh, the world map, and then I was like, oh, nice! It actually kind of goes on a little bit. And then you can kind of see on the other side of like the trees that you're like navigating around you just walk over and i saw two little guys who look like garden gnomes because they're just like that sprite that they use and i was like oh that's cute there's a couple guys and then i moved over one square again and there's just two more of them and i was like oh my god and then i was just there's just like a huge circle of uh of old men there's just there's just 12 old homies hanging out just kicking it out here does one of them have a different uh design in your games no not in mine there is one who's uh he kind of he has kind of a purple outfit. Who would that like be? Who could that? I oh, who it's it him. Is. Oh, it's Lucan. Lucan. <laughs> we Lucan. finally caught up to him. Hell so. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Lucan says, uh, I am Lucan in mine. Anyway, he says, I'm Lucan. Now all legends and prophecy will be fulfilled. Our path has been decided. Uh, and basically these different, 
12, they call themselves the 12 sages. One of them says that out loud. And yeah. they kind of give you like the an FF1 style uh, exposition dump, I guess, where they catch you up on like what the plot is going to be for the latter half of the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So now we have kind of a overall, again, I think a goal set in mind. This is like the whole prophecy kind of laid laid out that we are supposed to be kind of embarking on, it seems. Right, right. And they kind of explain that, like, you know, what we did with the Lich earlier, like, you defeat the fiend that has taken an orb or a crystal, and then you restore the crystal. Uh, and so they kind of give us the history of these fiends a little bit, that these fiends stole all the crystals, and they've used their element to basically ruin that element in real life. So our mission now for the rest of the game is to find the different fiends of the elements and put them down and restore the crystals, and that should bring the like nature back into harmony. Yeah, we got to knock them down. Right, right. We got to knock them down. <laughs> <laughs> um, in mine, they they specifically talk about how like they're all located at their like secret altars, and so we have to like discover all the altars. Um, but I will say there is one important piece of uh, I mean not that not that that's not important, but there's an interesting piece of lore here at least in my game uh the sage in the top left i get it, the the northwesternmost yeah. sage it would be 11 o'clock <laughs> yeah it would Maybe, be uh, i don't know yeah. uh, he says um four fiends are bent on the world's destruction 200 years ago the fiend of wind teamed with that of water to attempt to destroy civilization um and that doesn't really mean a lot to us right this second, other than... It's 400 in my game. Is it 400 in your game? So there's there's a little bit of a timeline um, like discrepancy here, too. Curtis, do they talk about um, one awakening earlier than another? Yeah, well, they, they say that the wind and um, uh, water woke up and started doing this stuff on mine. Yeah, because in, in my version of the game, they talk about how um, the Wind Fiend appeared 400 years ago and the Water Fiend 200 years ago. And then you continue on and, uh, you know, the Earth Fiend rots the Earth, the Fire Fiend burns everything in its path. Um, and one of them does mention that, like, there was a prophecy for one of the Fiends to, like, wake up on a certain timeline and it actually woke up early. Oh, uh, okay. And the reason that it woke up early was because um, we defeated, uh, like the, f- uh, I think, I think the lich is the reason that it woke up early. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So it says uh, the fire fiend has long slept within Mount Glug or Golg, a volcano west of this town, but now awakens two hundred years before the prophecy foretold. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, they say, and then the the last guy that you talked to before, uh, Lucan, is uh, he says, "Well done, Light Warriors! You've defeated the Earth Fiend and restored the Crystal's light. By d- but by doing so, you have roused the Fire Fiend from its slumber two hundred uh, years before its prophesized awakening." Interesting. So that, I mean, that kind of makes sense, I guess, if they go in two hundred year cycles. Yeah. Does he also give you something? He does. Yes, he and certainly so does. We get the canoe. Mm-hmm. Canoe. Take this canoe, go to Mount Golg, and stop the destruction. <laughs> and then you talk to Lucan, and he just says, I am Lucan, a prophet. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> you were the one who got a name, and yet are the most useless of the sages. Yeah, because I saw him, and I was like, okay, he's probably the, the guy who is going to you know, tell me about what I need to do and all of that. I was like, so I'm going to go just uh, clockwise around and start what I with the guy too. next to him, go all the way around. And like everyone lays everything out, and they're like, here, take this canoe, go to this volcano, and kick this thing's ass. And then it's just like, I'm Lucan. And yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, I heard about you. I thought Bring you'd be Bring us to taller. the crystals. <laughs> 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 I like the kind of weird uh, tonal contrast of being like, this is like going to the big great Deku tree, but instead of getting like the master sword after him laying out like the whole lore of the world, he's like, here's a canoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I get to send you to a fucking terrible place. <laughs> yeah. What I, what I like about this is I know the plot of FF one. And so I'm not going to like spoil it or whatever, but um, sure. I think that this is the first time in the game, we get the idea that there's large time intervals at play here, which is going to become a thing coming Besides up. Besides yeah. the bank being uh, shut down for yeah, years. Right, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true, yeah. Um, but yeah, the idea that like these like time cycles are happening, and like this happens, and then this happens, but oh, it's supposed to be this is earlier, but why didn't it happen? Like, yeah. 
that kind of I feel like becomes the thing of Final Fantasy one. Like if like if Seven's thing, if its theme was overcoming your like set destination in life, this one is kind of about like time cycles. And yeah, yeah. that'll end up being bigger. The world has moved on and time no longer makes sense. Just like Much real like life the today. Dark Tower. And real life today, yeah. yeah. So um, uh yo, we yeah. have a canoe. We got a fucking canoe. We got a fucking canoe. We, we got a fucking canoe. <laughs> we got, we built we got a, zoo. a fucking canoe. <laughs> Wait, that's the balloon song. Again. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucking canoes. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucking canoe. Fuck your mother. Um <laughs> So yeah, dude, we have, we got this fucking canoe. We can go down rivers now, which it kind of almost seems like not a it's not a backward progression. But I guess I'm used to like JRPGs being like, here's something to traverse small areas, and then you get a ship later to traverse a big area. And like, yeah. we kinda, this is like if we got the um, the Bronco after we got the high wind. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I mean, it kind of it kind of tracks with the tiny Bronco. Yeah, because the the tiny Bronco, like you can only pretty much go through rivers. Yeah, versus right. like the buggy, which could go over some rivers and stuff. Yeah, well, it's like um, a. <laughs> Like, I guess our boat doesn't have any, like, lifeboats or anything like that. Like, we had, like, <laughs> we had no means to traverse the rivers. Yeah, if you if you get caught in the middle of the sea. I guess we stole it from a pirate, so. That's true. Can't really be true. I mean, he, no, he gave it to us. Well, he did give it to us, but I mean, like, he probably, like, he's a pirate. He probably didn't follow OSHA regulations and have, like, safety <laughs> gear on board and lifeboats and things. OSHA <laughs> regulations or ocean regulations? Because I think it's neither. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it too. <laughs> and the the latency because this is a video call during quarantine is ma- makes it even better with that, <laughs> that nice silence that uh, that Alex will hopefully edit out, <laughs> or he can edit in some crickets. Or maybe I'll just make it longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We can so, only hope. So I'm level 15 going into this, um, but I will say once we so once we get on the river, right? There's kind of like a river maze. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, like these rivers are like it, they're they're tangly and they're in between mountains, so we can't actually get off the uh, the canoe at any point. Like while we're well, while after we leave a uh, Crescent Lake, I should say Crescent yeah. Lake funnels into some rivers, and that's kind of what yeah. we're taking to try to get to a. What is nice about the canoe though is that we don't have to park it anywhere. We just walk into yeah. the river, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just walk right on to whatever land is there. But yeah. we are going into like a mountain canyon pass sort of thing. So yeah, it's 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 probably like kind of trying to evoke like I imagine trying to evoke like rapids and stuff like that. And like, yeah, the old yeah, Colorado yeah. River. Yeah, yeah. That's kind that's kind of the feeling I got from it. Is like or like the Mississippi. Yeah, the I, I mean, that's Mississippi. kind of the feeling I got from it. Is I, yeah. I especially thought the Colorado like going in between canyons and stuff like that. Well, the um, South has more of uh, the um, crocodiles and piranhas, which are oh. things I encountered. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. We do yeah. fight piranhas and stuff on this river. Yeah, it's very white, true. White crocodile, um, and I fought two red piranhas. So those, yeah, I fought a shit ton of these things. Um, there's like different classes of crocs. Like the white croc, I think, is the more powerful one. And then there's also just the Boo. crocodiles and like red piranhas and just piranhas. Um, I didn't but see any I, red piranhas. Um. I mean, I'm sure they're there. Was... I'm just saying I didn't run into any. Yeah, yeah. And it might be named something different in your game as well. Yeah, that's fair as well. Carl and I are much tastier, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you actually pull up, we pull up the map, you can actually see where the rivers lead yes. in the yeah. in-game map, yes. which is kind of handy if you're kind of trying to figure out what goes where. Definitely. I highly recommend that, yeah. Yeah, of what major markers. And I kind of knew that the volcano, Mount Golg, is the closest, I think. Um, of the stops along this river. Yeah. Which is where we're yeah. headed. Yes. Which is kind of an up and then dick like an up path and you're kind of spirals left and then you're <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta follow a couple things. Um, but yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. If, if you want to be like very precise, you go north when you can and then north again and then west twice. <laughs> and that's how you get there. But um, yeah, eventually we pass fi- the Sunoco. Pass the. <laughs> <laughs> uh, eventually we find um, the, yeah, the volcano is just kind of sitting on a little like. Is it on an island? It's on an island, isn't it? It's yeah, I guess probably. It's, it's probably form an island that has been formed by the volcano. Is a house with action. a moat around it on an island? Yes. Well, then I don't it's on an island. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Alex is like yes. 
It's, this probably was just a lake that a uh, and a um, yeah. underwater volcano rose up and formed this. Yeah, area. yeah, or it was like a a, a like forest. A th- yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, or, or like a forest that then w- a, a volcano was formed or whatever. Who knows? Who could yeah. say? <laughs> who 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 can say? Who could say? Um. All right. Into the volcano. Yeah. Lord. Yeah. Oh, God, do you want to take a break before we get thrown into the fucking volcano? <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, it's... Uh, all right, break yes, time. Yes, yes. <laughs> and break. So we're on the volcano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back from being sacrificed. <laughs> How was it? It's honestly, it kind of sucked, but yeah. I think it'll be all <laughs> well, right. If I'm being honest, it kind of sucked. <laughs> yeah, if I'm being honest, uh, how y'all feel about um, how y'all feel about tile-based floor damage? I'll tell you what, I feel pretty good about it after your tip last week. Because holy yeah, shit, I will take. Yeah. I will take tip? this. I did. Yeah, I think you did it on the show. What was the tip? Or maybe it was just on the stream. I did it I afterwards. Had, but... I didn't do okay. it on the episode. I said it afterwards while we were all just hanging out. So uh, there's the... a, a God Gamer pro tip that Curtis God Gamer pro tip slid for... my way. Yeah, for this. He opened up his trench coat and said, you want a game <laughs> facts, kid? I, I opened up my trench coat and said, what are you buying? <laughs> you ever seen an action replay up close? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. So Gold Volcano, right? Um, it... The enemies inside of it are absolutely devastating. Mm-hmm. Um, they can ruin your day real quick. Um, some of them have multi-target fire spells. Mm-hmm. They can do like 100 mm-hmm. damage per cast. And they yep. cast them, at least on the NES game, with a frequency of like every other turn. So yep. it's feasible you could get into a fight with like five of them, and then they all cast it, and you just game over. Like it, yeah. rare chance for that to happen, but not that rare. You know, but what I mean? NES rare, like original Nintendo rare, which is yeah. like pretty frequent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's still upsetting at very least. Um, yeah. So uh, the other thing that's in this dungeon, as if that wasn't bad enough, is are, are lava tiles that you can walk on that cause damage to your party. Yeah. Um, and those are on every floor. There's a ton of them everywhere. You step in the lava and it does damage. What is interesting is that stepping in molten fucking lava only does one damage to your party. Mm-hmm. So that's these <laughs> these heroes are fire resistant. They uh, they went to uh, the demon ruins and fought the centipede demon and got the orange <laughs> char ring. And now right. Lost Isolith is not a problem for them to go through. <laughs> It looks like shit, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of comparable to being like poisoned, but yeah, yeah, where yeah, yeah. Like, it's, so it's, you receive damage every time you move. It's Correct. the exact right. damage thing. I wonder if they stack. I wonder if you're poisoned and walk through it if it does two damage. No, I don't know. I don't think I anything... should check into that. Well, actually, I think things here do poison. Actually, I think yeah. they do. Yeah, he kills germs. It kills the poison, poison right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's good it's enough like, for me. It's like when you're sick and you drink whiskey or something, and you're like, yeah, alcohol kills germs. This makes <laughs> sense. Um. So the the pro strat though the game the gamer tip for all you gamers is a uh, I think we do have a couple gamers who listen to the show may. as well so we may and if we don't now we may in the future so that we're just yeah Fu- we're to like all future gamers out there here. to all future yeah. gamers gamers um, lend me your ears <laughs> gamers uh, do ga- not rise up <laughs> gamers far and cl- close and far near and near and far whatever anyway um lava tiles do not have random battles on them. Yes. And because the lava only does one damage, that's a lot less damage than you would take in most of these fights. Just stay on the lava the whole time. Like, yep. don't walk on normal tiles, like, anytime you can. So, my trip to the bottom of the volcano actually wasn't that bad because I didn't spend any time on normal floor tiles whenever I could. I yeah. just walked in the lava the whole time. And also, when we say this is like a pro tip or whatever, it's not even really like it's something that you would probably pick up on yourself because there are large stretches, especially on like the later floors of this, where yeah. you're just only walking in lava for most of it. Right. And it's it's also very maze like in the same sense that the uh, the oh, river God. was to where like oh, yeah. I 
Like full disclosure, I this game has beaten me down so much that I don't have anything to prove to it anymore. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna look at a map. I'm gonna see exactly where I need to go, and I'm going to go there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's the thing is like, uh, because it's all like tile based, and there aren't like like the pre rendered backgrounds we had in like the PS One era, um, or or later games when they actually had like modeling. Like, there's n- unless it's treasure. There's not a lot of like things to find in dead ends. Like yeah. in Final Fantasy VII, we might walk down a dead end, and even though there's no items there, we might see like a cool plane crash there or something, and we can like speculate about what what that plane is and where it came from, right? Yeah. But the NES game doesn't really have that, and so I would say that it's not really it's not really important to not look Explore at a map. Like, look every, at a map. Look yeah. at a map. Go the right direction because you're not finding things like that in this game. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you want to try and, like, navigate through this five floors of lava that does damage every time you st- step once, like, more power to you. But, like, yeah, if you go right. all the way down one way and it's a dead end and then you have to walk all the way back, you know, it's... Right. And, like, hey. again, you have 99 potions, which, at this point in the game, you're easy to go through, like, in one yes. trip through a dungeon. Yes, Like, I absolutely. had to go back to town and buy more after, like, trying to collect just the specific treasure chests that I wanted before the boss. So, speaking of treasures, let's talk about the second floor. Sure. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, the first floor is basically just kind of a ninja star layout. You can just walk yeah. straight across to the yep. other stairs. Super easy. It's just kind of let you yep. know how the level works. Where it's like, yeah. oh, you have to walk across level to get, to get over there. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I guess that's important to to bring up is that like there's no way to get to the second floor without walking over lava tiles. So yeah. I guess it does kind of like intentionally desensitize you to that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but the uh, second floor, there is basically yeah. there. You're, so the entire floor is kind of a square. Um, on the bottom. L- I would say the bottom border, you can just go straight across to the stairs leading down one more floor. But yeah, it's literally a straight The rest shot. of the level is basically just a maze, which you can just mm-hmm. go. There's multiple entrances to. An optional maze, yeah. If you want to yeah. get some loot on your way An down. optional maze through no lava. Correct. There are no lava tiles in this maze. You just go through a door, and like we've talked about before, like you don't see what's in there until you walk in. So you'll walk in and you'll be like, oh, okay, I'm in a hallway kind of thing. And you can see treasure chests near you. So then you follow your way around there and like there's a yep. shit ton of chests in here. Yo, there is one room with, let me let me count them real quick. Yeah. 12 chests in it. Yep. 12 treasure chests. Wild. And what's crazy about it is I think most of them are filled with gill. <laughs> yep. Okay. So there is so much money in this, mm-hmm. in this dungeon. And uh, I don't know how it is in your game, but in my game, they were all like dates. Like There's like 1975 Gil, 1987 Gil. And I was like, what if huh. like developers birthdays or some shit? I wonder. I wonder if it's 1520. Like so I'm it, looking. It, <laughs> one of the developers probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at um, I'm looking at the, the list that I have here and it's like, yeah, 1975, 1520, another 1520. There's 14, one with 4,150 gil. That's like yeah. in the upper uh, left side. The big Yeah, they, they're they're oddly specific, but I don't know, at least in our game, if it like refers to anything. It's not like 1776 or, you know, 1997 <laughs> or whatever. There are also, um, like last dungeon, a lot of uh, mandatory battles tiles throughout yes. this yeah. section. Uh, mostly work- fire elementals. I was going to say, I remember my, uh, I think it was the Noma for years, Carl. Yeah, and it was, was the, the Noma Earth. in the last um, in the last one. And I was thinking about it uh, after this week, and this kind of just looks like Ifrit. Oh, really? Yeah. Mine is, like mine the, is basically just a recolor of the <laughs> of the Earth Elemental. And it's just yeah, so I'm, it, that's the same as in mine. It's the it's just a, a recolor of the, uh, the Noma, but it looks a lot like Ifrit oh, in my opinion. Okay. One of them is a uh, Lava Worm as well yeah yeah they call me lava worm it looks like the alaskan bull worm from spongebob <laughs> he looks kind of like, like a, um, a tiny dune worm i was gonna yeah. say yeah <laughs> yep that's exactly what i was gonna say you uh, cut it open and get some of that sweet sweet spice melange. <laughs> sweet sweet spice <laughs> melange rules everything around me <laughs> um <laughs> So nice yeah, world. but uh, like we were saying though, th- there's a lot of like normal tiles here, and the enemies are pretty devastating. So like mm-hmm. going into this area is a bit of a risk, right? Yeah. Like you're you're kind of taking your party's life into your hands with great yeah. reward. Yeah, right. 
yeah. but I actually, speaking of great reward, though, uh, I got the first sword that's actually been better than the silver sword here called yeah. the giant's sword. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, I think in my game it's called a claymore, but I was okay. looking into it cause I hear claymore and I'm like, Oh, that's just a that's standard just an anime weapon that type. Came out yeah. That's like just like, <laughs> it's just a standard weapon type in most RPGs or like D and D kind of thing. But when I read the description of it, it actually says that it deals more damage to giant type enemies. So like your oh, trolls or your ogres or maybe like the hill gigas. Yeah. Or those mage ogres sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the, the ogre the, chieftain. The mage ogres, the mogers. The mogers. Um, it's called the great sword in mine. Okay. Okay. Again, just a name of a but sword. Yeah, it's, it's actually a pretty good weapon, though. Yeah. I don't, uh, there, I don't there, know if I equipped that. There is a final door to, before we go down that just leads to a, a very long loop that leads nowhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The yep. last so there so there's multiple ways to get into this little maze that take you to different places. The last one has like the longest path and is just a dead end. <laughs> yeah, it's a real fuck you. <laughs> yeah, it's a real fuck you. <laughs> uh so what I did I, I'll tell you right now, after I got these treasures, I left. I was like, done, going back to town, buying more potions. <laughs> yep. So yep. that's pretty much what you have to do. Oh, by the way, the uh the fire elemental in my game is called a Pyros. Okay. That's a cool so. name. Yeah, it is. I good. like it. It's a good X Men. Or a, a member of the X- Brotherhood. I can't remember where. A good X Men. So. A few good X Men. Depending on who's writing it. A few okay. good X Men. So all the president's X Men. <laughs> so um floor three mm-hmm. and four. Let's talk about both these floors simultaneously. <laughs> Yeah, because that's three what it is, is a retro walkthrough. Three is a meandering, <laughs> uh, a th- yeah, three is a meandering hallway, but is kind of a rippled with uh, basically stripes of t- t- actual tiles not are not lava. Yeah, so you're basically bound to just get lots of encounters in your way. You get the, the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. Did either of you run into a red dragon? Yes, I, I did not encounter a red dragon, but I did fight one later. Okay, yeah, in level four. So. I will say this. I ran into a no, red wait. dragon on this um, on this part and didn't really have too much trouble with it. I was like, oh, let's... Oh. Yeah, and I was surprised. Mm-hmm. But later, there is a red dragon guarding a very good set of chests yep. that absolutely fucked me up. Yep. And I was not prepared for it because I was like, ah, red dragon, I'll be able to take care of that. And then it just instantly fucking killed me. Yeah. I was like, shit. So if, you, um, if you're playing this game, depending on which version you're playing and what hardware you're playing on... Uh, using your temporary save states, yes, or like if you're an emulator, an actual save state is a good idea here because mm-hmm. running into a red dragon, if if the rolls are just wrong, could be the end for you. Yep. Um, it has an attack that does fire damage on all your party, and it can do upwards of two hundred per. Which like my white mage has like two oh eight like oh, HP, no. yeah. so like hopefully they're topped off. Like yeah, exactly, it's devastating. And- Hopefully they didn't they didn't take eight steps coming to this floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, yeah, yeah. Um yeah, it's it's a beast. And there's also a uh, in my game there's Cerberuses and uh, they're like the Panther Sprite and they have an attack called Scorch and it'll do it's basically like fire two on everybody, yeah. about a hundred damage to each character. Yeah, um, I think in my game they're called the Hellhounds. Okay. Because oh, those yeah, motherfuckers those. killed me a bunch, and I hated them. Yeah, <laughs> they look like straight out Resident Evil. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. spell that we got way earlier, a fear <laughs> or anti fire or whatever, that works wonders here if you can squeeze it off. Fuck yeah! So, good, but sometimes yeah, the enemies will just do the attack before White Mage gets to go. Yep, exactly. Because again, I mean, there's no real way to like leverage your attacks before others. So if you run into like four or five of these enemies. And right. then it's like your party, like you're like mathematically like not likely to even get a turn in for them to all just be like, oh, hey, fuck you. Your whole party's wiped out. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I hated I, those things. I fought a few uh, fire hydra, which is very close to a fire hydrant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which would have been like very the opposite useful. of a fire hydrant. It, it <laughs> shoots fire out of it. <laughs> fire, fire hydrant. Wait, you, you open yeah, it up and th- fire comes out. Huh, it's called a fire hydrant, yet it shoots out water to stop the fire. It's curious. <laughs> open up the water hydrant, you open the water hydrant, and fire shoots out of it. <laughs> the fire hydrants here are yellow. This place is starting to freak me yeah. out. It's starting to freak me out. <laughs> so good. Um, 
But yeah, level- other than- sorry, go ahead. Oh, nothing. I was just about to go on to the next level. So level- yeah, level three didn't have much. Level four was kind of there are a lot of uh, so corridors leading to different treasure rooms. Yes. There is an interesting thing with um, level three, and it's oh. that when you first go in, you just pretty much like, if you go to the left where you came in, it's just a dead end. So you then have to go to the right where the staircase is leading down to uh, basement four. Um, oh, right. Before immediately you, like leads back up to three, doesn't it? Yeah. So once you like are making your progression through this dungeon, like you actually have to go back up a floor. So you're back yeah. on, um, on floor three, but you're in a t- completely different section of it. So like it's way it's way different but it's like it's weird like and i think that's kind of cool too like instead of it just being like an old nes game where it's like oh okay well there's like you know seven staircases in here right right it's not just oh you're in the seventh basement it's like oh no you made it all the way to this side of this basement then you went down and then you had to walk all the way over to go back up to then like i think that's i mean like they, they could have easily just made the seven floors. In, yeah, with, functionally, with it's maps. just seven floors. Yeah, yeah, but it's uh, different yeah. maps. But you're navigating so, but, between a few different ones that are. Like, they don't. Yeah, it no feels. Get... Yeah, it feels cool where you're like, oh shit, I'm back on. It like it feels like they cared about like the presentation a lot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like it's it, it's not like a man made structure. Like there would be a lot of traversing like like yeah. that. I'm sure mm. to get through it. Yeah, yeah, I liked that. Hell, Hell yeah! I didn't Final like Man. going Hell yeah, through Square. it. Good job, Square. Yeah, yeah this yeah. Final Fantasy thing may take off yet. <laughs> Good job, Albert Fantasy. You've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, event- once we do go back up to the third floor, we make our way back to the fourth floor as well, and then we continue downward. And uh, yeah. like you were saying, Alex, like this floor is like a lot of optional paths. Like basically, like you you'll get to a fork in the road where there's two ways to go. And one will take you to a treasure room. The other one will take you, will continue onward. And you keep repeating that pattern as you go. Uh, a detour to a treasure room or continue on. Um, and there's, you know, there's, there's gill in a lot of them. Uh, like I was saying about the NES treasures one time, when you take one from one treasure chest, it doesn't appear in the other one. So for me, it was like a lot of gill and a lot of empties. <laughs> oh, my well. God. But... Like you were talking about running into a red dragon on floor four. I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, there is a treasure room that has a couple treasures in it with some choice gear. Oh, some yeah. Absolute choice gear. Uh, but it's it's protected by multiple event tiles. Event tiles? Yeah. Battle tiles. Yeah, you know I think I mean. event tile makes sense. Yeah. Battle yeah. tile. So, this, I think you're t- so you must be talking about the room in the far On, most- on the fifth floor. On the fifth floor. Wait, on the fifth, the fifth floor, floor is where the red dragon one is. Oh, okay. It's, on it's four. Right, but no, there is there is some pretty choice materia. Um, materia. I almost call it Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So in, in, in basement four, there is a room with um, in the far westmost area um, that has yeah, a thing thinking, called a flame shield in ours and an ice uh-huh. band, which yeah, both yeah. seem really flame handy. shield and ice sword. Yeah, uh, I, I, I the thought ice brand. Maybe it wasn't protected. This was protected by a lava worm. It's it's just a lava worm. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, that that ice brand was very necessary because that does a lot of damage to things in here. I'm pretty sure, right? I just said that with like so much confidence, and then I was <laughs> immediately like, "Wait, maybe it didn't." <laughs> maybe it melts. No, because I think Blizzard is really good against the enemies here. Okay. So the ice brand is like elemental damage that hurts. So them I more. just I just looked at it in the it's again the NES version, man. In the NES version, its elemental attributes just don't work, so it doesn't do shit. <laughs> uh, it, it, it is more powerful than a lot of the other weapons I have right nice. now, so I still equip it. Um, but yeah, it doesn't actually do what I want it to do. Right, um, of course. The flame shield resists cold, which isn't useful right now per se, but it oh. will be very soon. Is that um, also the same thing with the flame mail? Yes. They resist cold. Interesting. So, which is, it's different. In all the other Final Fantasy games, you get a fire shield, which repels fire. Yeah, again, uh, it makes sense. It's, it's fire hydrant logic, but. Yeah, I exactly. Not, exactly. <laughs> I did not yeah. pick up on that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, apparently in the later versions, it does actually do more damage to many of these enemies here, with the exception of the boss, which we'll get to. 
Right. But, but like you said, um, it's a more powerful weapon than, you know, the other one that you had and might also do more, uh, like critical hits or like the, you know, three hits or whatever, because it's higher in the inventory or whatever decides yeah. that. Right, yeah. right, right. And, uh, I'm, I'm looking here at my, my notes and everything. Uh, you are right, Carl. The fifth floor is the one yep. that has a treasure chest with a red dragon in front of it. Yeah. Yep. And it's that funny too, because it's fucker. Yeah, in the fifth floor, I don't think there's really much of anything. I think there's actually, like, if you make your way... Um, so w- when you get to the fifth floor, you, you just kind of have, like, an asterisk shape of, like, ways that you can go across some yeah. lava. So, so you can go... there's eight different directions, yeah. and all of them but two have nothing. <laughs> yeah, and the two that have something have really tough fights in it. It's the boss, yeah. which is in the, like, the... Uh, Southwest. I guess the southwest, and then right across, like straight west, is where there's these treasure chests. Or yeah. this, is it just one. one treasure chest? One treasure chest. Yeah. So there's one treasure. Well, they chest have in two there. mandatory encounters, which means you have yeah. to fight. But one's positioned away where you have to cross it twice. The Agama. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it, or it's the, funny in mine, it's called the fire lizard. Yeah, the fire oh, okay. lizard in ours as well. Because you you walk into this room and you see the chest and you're like, oh, okay, cool. I can open these things from any level. Because like at some point I saw that there were like the event tiles or the battle tiles or whatever. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just not going to fuck with that. I'm just going to go from the left side of it where there isn't one of those. <laughs> and I will simply reach into the chest and open it that way. Um, but in this one, it's like surrounded by rock structures. So yeah. you have yes. like three tiles of walking that you can do. And two of those have mandatory encounters. Yep. The one that's right on top of the chest. Yeah, the one right on top of the chest is the red dragon. And the yep. uh, yeah. the fire lizard is like two away. But you have to walk on it twice. But the fire lizard is not bad, though. It doesn't have like a lot no. of HP or anything. So it's, Yeah, you it's can take really it down pretty quickly. Deal. It's yeah. more of a like, oh shit, I have to fight this thing again after just going through this red dragon which was really exactly difficult. yeah also wasn't that a hannibal movie red dragon yes red dragon wasn't that like you a sequel fight, you to... fight hannibal lecter <laughs> yeah you gotta fight hannibal lecter yeah he chews your white mage up no <laughs> yeah you know what i mean if you've seen any of those movies anyway um yeah <laughs> You want to go southwest you want to get southwestern on South it by southwest. yeah well did we talk about yeah. what's in the chest oh we didn't that's the what, flame mail. What a fool I am. What a fool. It's the f- <laughs> it's a it's flaming the flame mail. mail. <laughs> which I was like, oh my God, I need to get that for this boss because if this area is any indi- in- indicator, it's going to be a fire type boss. So I need as much defense as I can get. And exactly. And apparently. But no, yeah, it defends not. against the cold. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it would make fire attacks worse. <laughs> I, I guess so. I don't Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like like I'm gonna go into this volcano. I need to dress up, and you put on like a bunch of like ski jackets and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll show yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So now let's go southwest. It's like a sauna in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So southwest. There's another little room. It's about the size of the lich's room. It's, and it looks very similar to the lich's the same room. interior designer. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> this one doesn't have like the. Like in mine, it doesn't have the cool pixelated blood spikes, which is a bummer, but yeah. you can't win them all. Yeah, I, I'm guessing it also doesn't have a throne. Um, There is a bitch and throne thing in this one. Nice. Oh, interesting. Which I think that might just be a teleporter. I'm not sure. It, tiny NES sprites, but they it it looks fucking bitching as always. Nice. But yeah, so we walk in here immediately in front of us or immediately in front of me was just the crystal. It's just the second tile into the door for me. Yeah. Um, for me, it's an orb. Yeah, it's it's an orb for us. Same as last time. Uh, okay. There's a well, crystal, actually, there's a crystal in the background. As well. Oh, really? Yeah. So there's orbs and crystals. Yeah, so you walk in, there's yes. the orb, and then there's a crystal like just floating kind of behind. Oh. Well, in mine, there's just the one. <laughs> and they yeah. kind of, they've, they've used like heroes of crystals and heroes with the orbs like multiple times. Yeah. Yeah, and in mine, it, we only see the orb, and I, yeah. I think it's just that that's the crystal. Bless the orbs. Real quick, when you open the menu, mm-hmm. do you see how many of these you've collected? Yes. yes. It, it shows how many of the crystals I've collected. It shows crystals yeah. there? So mm-hmm. I think in this one, the orb is implied to be containing the fiend that we fight. Yeah, yeah, that's what I got. It's like a Pokeball. Because yeah. like in mine, when I open the menu, I see how many orbs I've collected. Yeah. Shit's, shit's confusing, man. So yeah. here's our menu. Okay, I see. Just in, yeah, the, in, the, in the little bottom right. Okay. Have. So like it's interesting. They, they kind of split both out in yours, in your games. Like they made yeah. the orbs and the crystals kind of separate things. 
And uh, yeah, in mine, they kind of make them just one, right? Like there's just there's just an interchangeably named a, a, orb. an orbular crystal, a crystalline orb. So yeah, it's implied like- that maybe you're like literally the crystal is a drop from your the enemy. Yeah, maybe. or something like that. Yeah. V- for, for why? The, yeah. Whether for us, we are fighting basically an orb containing a fiend. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like calling everything a Game Boy. It's a handheld. <laughs> And that fiend is named what in your game? Uh, what is Maralith. Maralith in mine. Maralith, okay. In mine, it's yes. Carrie. Carrie? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, I'm saying that here. Close to my name. Oh, yeah. So last time when we fought the Lich, uh, you were presented with a third person like explanation of what's in front of you, right? Yes, yeah, and yeah. I, I kind of get something similar this time as well. So um, as soon as I talk to or communicate with check out the orb uh give it a look-see exactly a text <laughs> box pops up a and quick says, look-see is it you the tender that defeated the fiend of the earth and disturbs my sleep i carry will now show you the force of fire and you shall burn in its flames oh so yours actually isn't the first person this time because when we remember last time the lich it was like in front of you you see this and whatnot and the lich actually isn't talking to you it's just explaining to you like as a narrator, remember? Oh, I kind of assumed the Lich was talking in third person. Oh, maybe. <laughs> That's kind of what I assumed, too. I didn't think of it that way. That's a good point. It, though, the Lich seems real self-righteous in that way. <laughs> George is getting very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, in mine it says, uh, so you were the ones who defeated the Fiend of Earth and roused Merlith from her slumber, and then she transforms. Yeah. The power of the burning flame is mine and mine alone. Those who oppose me shall burn in hellfire. Ooh. That's cool as shit. Yeah. You're gonna burn in hell. Nintendo using a, a curse word. Wow. Can't Heck believe fire. it. <laughs> they, would, fire. They, they wouldn't even put churches in my game. They had to call them clinics. <laughs> <laughs> you now will burn in hell. The, the ward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so her dialogue... You will burn in the bad, stingy, burny place. <laughs> in the home for infinite losers. The Ooh. HFIL. There you That's go. That's a Dragon, Dragon Ball localization yeah. joke for anyone who didn't get it. Um, jokes are so much funnier when you explain them directly <laughs> after. <laughs> um, I was really confused by the dialogue because... Um, mm-hmm. Uh, that that she says in my game, but I'm reading it now and I'm like, oh wait, no, that makes perfect sense. She says, the earth fiend is gone. Who disturbs Marilis slumber? The power of fire is mine alone. Those who dare disturb me shall burn. And the reason it... it um, it confused me was because I just spent so much time walking through fire that I thought she said the fire fiend is gone. And I was like, am I going to have to do this fucking shit where I have to like go back to town, get a different item and then go to another fucking basement <laughs> in this place? Like, what the fuck do you mean? She's gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. But then I fought her and I was like, Oh, I guess that was the fiend. But yeah, it's just, I can't read. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am looking at, the sprite on Alex's game right now, the GBA one, and it is so fucking badass. Yeah, it's real gnarly. <laughs> like, the NES one's pretty badass, but, like, that is so dope. <laughs> yeah, real, she's real a... Dark uh, Souls energy. Yeah, so f- from the waist down, she's a fucking, like, serpent, like, purple serpent, and from the waist up, she is just, like, a bikini babe with six arms and a f- and six scimitars. Six <laughs> fucking scimitars in each, like, one in each hand. How fucking uh, badass is that? Imagine, if you will, that Snake Jafar from Aladdin and Jasmine did the fusion <laughs> dance from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> With Goro from Mortal Kombat. Hell yeah. I was thinking of the um, Hydra from, uh, uh, well, shit. Dark Hercules. Souls. Hercules. Hercules. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fucking badass, though. Um, yeah. So, I'm kind of curious. How how did you all do against Marilith? I mean, uh, I did I fine, but I let her just wail on me to see what she did. I got you. <laughs> You're into that kind of thing? Well, yeah. What did she do? What, what kind of moves? Uh, so she hit me with Fyra, I think, a few times, and Dark, which was pretty devastating as well. But yeah, some of these yeah. like, am- animations were pretty wild. They, they were like, yeah, I'll just land on just fireballs on me. <laughs> L- land on them fireballs. Yeah, Firing but mostly just fire balls. and dark attacks. Okay. Which they were doing fucking beastie damage like almost 100 each yeah and i think she has the same sort of uh deal as the lich did where there's like a spell cycle and it's like fire a dark fire a dark fire a hold fire a hold 
Yeah. And it's right. uh, it, casting one roughly 37.5% of the time, um, or she'll do uh, physical strikes. Right. So uh, she has a more limited spell set than the Lich. Mm-hmm. Like, because the Lich has had, like, a shit ton of stuff to choose from. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, she kind of has that, like, tighter order of spells, um, with every other one being Fire 2 or Fira, yeah. Um, so I will say this, though. Now that we have access to Protect Ga or uh, Fog 2 in my game, yeah, we can really start to put up defenses against these enemies. So I actually did cast Afer or A Fire and Fog 2, and the combination of those actually like made a giant difference. Like That's I was able to survive yeah. physical attacks against like my white mage and stuff like that. Hell yeah. so, so I feel like this is like the first battle. This is the first boss battle to me that feels like a boss battle from a later Final Fantasy where it's a yeah. little more drawn out and there's a little more strategy involved in it. Yeah, for me, um, I kind of just did the same strategy that I did against against the Lich, which was pretty successful where I just have my... I think I just uh, casted like Shield 2 on my entire party yeah. and then um, also had my Black Mage just dole out Haste and uh, whatever the... In- increase your attack spell is on, right. on my warrior and then i just wailed on him and then like used magic wherever i could so i did cast um fire not fire uh fast on my fighter which mm-hmm. allows for more hits right and uh so so in my game Marilith has 600 total hp she also has the highest defense of any enemy we fought thus far which is really significant when i attacked yeah. her with my red mage who had a mithril sword he did one damage so jesus yeah no, no damage to marilith i should also say marilith uh, does not take cold damage you would think that cold does better on her oh it does not <laughs> so no. she is actually resistant to ice so it does less damage to her so. She has a ridiculously high uh, magic defense in uh, my version too. Like yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So all that being said, like a ton of defense, you're not doing a lot of damage. Um, and again, 600 HP in mine. Okay, so the battle was going on, doing all of its good stuff. Whatever, I cast fast on the um, the fighter, and I waited. I waited for a couple turns to put up all my defensive stuff. Right, so I cast. Finally, cast fast on the, fi- on the fighter, and I'm almost done with the fight by this point. I think I'm probably maybe like 60 HP away from doing it. And the fighter does a critical hit with fast. And let me look at this again. Oh, hell yeah. And to see how many HP damage that I did in one move. 518 damage in Holy one move. Shit. <laughs> I, I did like. 80% of all of Marilith's HP in one swing. It was the last swing. I was almost done with it, but like, that's hilarious at the same time though. It's like overkill. <laughs> yeah. It's like, she's like, she's like limping by the end of it and like almost dead. And then your fighter just like splits her entirely <laughs> yeah, in yeah, half with yeah. a critical hit. It was, it was real brutal. <laughs> that's insane. It was awesome. I was just like, Oh shit, I can do damage like that now. Cause you know, I don't, I don't cast, fast for normal fights like, yeah i haven't been doing that this game so yeah, it's kind I mean, of the it's, first time i've done it it's such a good spell but it's also a pretty high up spell so you don't really have too many to burn so you're not going to just use that in every fight like i pretty much only up? use it on i think it's like level four or something like may maybe it'd be level four yeah but i mean like, at this th- point in the game like i'm using like level six spells so i have a couple you hmm. know what i mean yeah like i'm not i'm not like Thurston for level four spells. I think you're not Thurston point. waffles, much I'm like I'm not Thurston waffles. My party waffles. when I when it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a oh? It's a black magic spell. Level, so I can find it. Yeah, level four. yeah, level four black magic. So it's it's not just that it's um th- that it's like just a level four one. Like we do have a lot of you know a pretty good amount of casts for it, but there's also good magic t- that you may want to use. Uh, at that same level that yeah, you yeah, just yeah, expected. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So. Yeah. But it, it did serve me well this time, so I was pretty Hell happy yeah. to have it, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it was a tough battle, but it wasn't it wasn't too difficult. Yeah, I, I will say, like, for, for as, like, kind of stressful as this dungeon can be because of all the damage you can take from the random enemies and everything, I actually feel like this boss was the first time that I was, like, really in the zone about it because the bo- it took long enough that I was able to, like, employ strategies. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I started getting that, like, 
that same good feeling that I get from playing the later Final Fantasies where I'm like, oh, I know how to equip my party and I know what spells to use and I know how to make this go really well for me. So, like, yeah. I feel like from this point on, I think this is where Final Fantasy 1 hits its stride. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I feel like uh, the lich was practiced. This was playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, I, I wish I knew more sports. Uh, anyway. That's fine. That's <laughs> I was like trying to think. I was like, what happens then? Is that, it just the season? That phrase also just doesn't make any sense. It's just a thing that people say when they're <laughs> no. like, oh, okay, well, last week didn't matter. This time is where it's like, it's like the real Dark Souls starts here kind of thing. But it, like, <laughs> that's, it doesn't that's make what, sense. Yeah, you're there like, we go. That makes sense to my fucking gamer brain. <laughs> you're like, doesn't it go like practice, then preseason, then season, then playoffs? There's a, you're, you're jumping over a lot. <laughs> the real NFL starts here is how people have to explain it to me. <laughs> the real NFL starts here. Are you, are you ready for some football? <laughs> don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't give up, skeleton. Don't give up skeleton. Um, Hang in there, skeleton. But yeah, we get our we get our free uh, free teleportation outside. God, the, the best. Bless, bless. Necessary because like if that wasn't here, this would fucking suck. I know, I know. And but, for uh, me, uh, another uh, bonus dungeon opens up. Alex just, is always just, bonus dungeons. Yeah, I actually yeah. um I, I I interacted with the crystal before I left the one that's hanging out, and it just says uh, sorry. It's just vibing. It says, sorry, what did it do? It said, this is the altar of fire from which the power of fire flows forth, which is a tongue mm, twister. A lot of, how dare they use alliteration? Imagine <laughs> using alliteration with Fs. That's fucked up. <laughs> but then I beam right. out there, yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> beam out. All right, well, I think that's, that's Bone really out. all we did this time, right? Or did you guys do anything yeah. else afterwards? No, we defeated Quaylag, and then we used uh, the dark sign to, to go back yeah, to Fire right. Shrine. <laughs> we gave up our humanity and <laughs> to use the dark sign. Um, all right, so... Now what? <laughs> so that's our... Um, yeah, that was kind of quick, but it was just a lot of uh, hot foot. Yeah, yeah, hot hot foot. And hot foot into the volcano. <laughs> like Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, yeah. 64. Not Super um, Mario Brothers, what? Yeah, I my guess brain is Mario fucking 64. melted. Whatever, let, Lu- let Luigi have a piece of the N sixty four game. It's fine. He did, he did on the <laughs> Nintendo DS. No, that's true. On on the Game Boy version of it, as we would say. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to compare this to um, when we were at Cosmo Canyon, and just a, th- a, a call back to when we were talking about like the, the nacho cheese or whatever the marinara, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, marinara yeah. games. Yeah, that <laughs> that <sounds. laughs> Mount marinara. Just go back and edit that in. Yeah. So next week. We're going to have, I don't want to say a short one as well, but we're going to kind of have a um, less plot heavy episode. We're going to be going around and doing a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so next time we're going to be doing the ice cave. That's going to be the next place that we want to go to. There's mm-hmm. going to be some choice, choice shit in that ice cave that we're going to want for sure. Are there slippery tiles <laughs> in this one? I don't think so. The same in Zelda. But we'll find out next <laughs> <Or> week. Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so, Ice Cave, we're going to go get the airship. <gasps> yes. Ooh, spoilers. Yes, airship. To the skies. Um, and then we're going to take our airship to the town of Gaia. Mm-hmm. Isn't Gaia gonna... the planet? Or the, con- yes. the whole world in FF7? It's like uh, mm-hmm. it's like how there's a Kansas City, Kansas. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a it's Gaia, like how there's a New York City, Gaia New town, York. Gaia. <laughs> <laughs> Gaia Town, USA. <laughs> One, two, three, Gaia Town. <laughs> New York, New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gaia, Gaia. Live um, from New York. <laughs> but yeah, we'll talk about that town. Uh, and yeah, so I think what we're doing, I would consider this, this is like the pre-games or whatever. Like this is like, <laughs> like we're going to be preparing to be able to take everything on because we're, we'll have our final mode of transportation at that point. Yeah. So we truly will have access. And then all bets are off, motherfucker. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got half our crystals, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're halfway there. We got two of them crystals and we, yeah, two yeah. more to go. So we'll go We'll go crystalless next episode. But um, crystal. That's when we're like... Crystalless. In a, that's when yeah. in, a, in your cocoon. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's when we're becoming butterflies. We go crystalless. We will have a semi-charmed kind of life by doing <laughs> crystal. <laughs> <laughs> Songs about meth. Is that song about meth? I'm pretty sure. That's that's dope. Meth's cool. Uh, meth is cool. You heard it here <laughs> first. <laughs> so for next week, everyone's going to want to do some meth. <laughs> do some meth. Add us on Twitter. Tell us how it went. 
I mean, everyone's been cooking at home this past few weeks. <laughs> yeah, every, everybody's been staying at home and they've been learning to cook. Some are just cooking meth. Smiling in the pictures you would take, doing crystal meth will lift you up until you break. Oh, are you reading the lyrics right now? It won't stop. It won't come down. I keep stuck with a TikTok rhythm and a bump for the drop. And then I oh. bumped up. I took the hit. I, for some reason, my brain can't like conceptualize how this actually is in the song without any music. I took the hit I was given. Again, then, then, then I bumped, bumped again, again. And then I bumped again. Yeah. Yeah. It's about One, doing three bumps. I mean, so the lyrics here, which looks like it's coming from a YouTube video, so it might just be a YouTube comment or whatever, says doing crystal myth. Myth? Final <laughs> Fantasy, the crystal myth. <laughs> <laughs> I want something else. To <laughs> uh, get me through this. <laughs> well, baby, there you have it. It's, it's try. <laughs> Be back next week with our Blink One Eighty Two podcast. <laughs> yeah. What <We're> fucking <laughs> stupid shitty nineties band will we talk about next week? Find yeah. out. Next week we'll have we'll talk about something else to get Eagle you Eye through Cherry. this. We're going to be talking about Eagle Eye Cherry next <laughs> week. Uh, <laughs> All right. I guess fucking drag us out of the volcano and throw us into the glacier, Alex. Oh, and mine is called uh, Mirage oh, 182. Oh, bitch. <laughs> Mirage 182. Invis, in, invis, invisaga 182. Uh, is anyone going to save tonight? Because <laughs> you can save in the video game. Oh. <laughs> I'm about to get off this call and save my game. <laughs> all right. I'm good with that if you're all good with that. I'm that good with that. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> all right. I'm already able to get in some tangent before we. <laughs> yeah. take, take us to the Marinara. Yeah. If you have any um, other Blink 182 cover band ideas, you can get, leave us a voicemail at 530 Materia. Um, otherwise, you can also reach out to us on the internets at every FNFF on Twitter, Instagram, or even Twitch sometimes. I've been trying to maybe organize a, I don't know, some sort of like Jackbox stream where we invite all our past guests just to kind of, <laughs> just to get us all in the same uh, space together. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, all in the same cyber room. It's not Hell Final yeah. Fantasy related, but we you know we've we've all done it this could before. Be. Could I'm be. sure we will talk <laughs> about get, Final Fantasy. I'm 100 percent certain <laughs> that we will discuss Final Fantasy at some point in that room. Yeah. If we- if we do a if we do a Jackbox and you have any kind of reference that isn't Final Fantasy or like the Goo Goo Dolls, then you are immediately banned from our channel. Skewing <laughs> <laughs> <Just> off <laughs> um, it's, music. It's gooing off in this room. <laughs> the goo mm. uh, music playing underneath us babbling throughout this episode is by Nobuo Matsu, unless it's something else that. You guys are referencing like a fucking musical <laughs> or uh, a, a song from Curse the Cowardly Dog like last week. <laughs> um, leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, check out whatever shirts we might have on our T Public, um, <laughs> like a Binal Fantasy or a. Go buy your, You deserve it. You deserve to buy yourself a Binal Fantasy shirt. I really do need to buy one of those shirts. <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't like that my friend Jay is the only one who has that. <laughs> I gotta take him down a peg. <laughs> I've been thinking about just ordering a stack of uh, Bone Villages for Lovers bumper stickers. Oh, yeah. That'd be yeah. Just slap them on some cars. Slap I don't em. own a car, but... You can put it on my car. Yeah. We can put it on I my... I see your car parked outside all the time and whenever I'm driving around. I, I'm always thinking really? about slapping some stickers on there. I would, I would love you to come slap my rear when I'm not even around. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that's about it. Um, anything else? Anything coming up, y'all? Cur- Curtis, you're, you're hosting a thing, aren't you? No, not necessarily, not necessarily. But you know what? I will say, uh, regardless of what my um, involvement Duties. is with it, in early June, this will be the first week of June, there's going to be a Final Fantasy relay race happening. So it's going to be all the different Final Fantasies, speed run, back to back. I think it's three teams, and um, I might be signed up to do some work with it, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to, because I straight up was like, uh, I don't know if I'm really good enough to either race or commentate, but if you need somebody, let me know and I will make it so that <laughs> so that I can. Either way, though, I'm definitely going to be watching a lot of it. Like it sounds like an absolute blast. I mean, you've been abs- reading on FF Five so, and stuff like that. You got shit yeah. to say. Oh, yeah, that's true. I definitely <laughs> could talk for four hours about Final Fantasy Five, no problem. But um, we will we'll see. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> we yeah, we will. will. <laughs> we will talk for many more than that. <laughs> I hate but, uh, trees. <laughs> yeah. So so check that out. If I if I'm not mistaken, I believe that starts June fourth. It's four days long. It's all weekend. So. Well, we'll bring yeah, it up before yeah. then. Even probably if we, I mean, yeah, we'll probably be done with the season before then. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll probably all be hanging out in the chat as well. Yeah, be a good time. Yeah. All right. All right. Anything else? Go listen to that new Homestuck album. Go listen Hell to yeah. Homestuck. Stay inside. Wash your hands. And buy Curtis's track, but only Curtis's track. No, no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Buy it all. <laughs> buy it all. <laughs> buy it all. <laughs> all right, y'all. Take it easy. Good night. See ya. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. Bye bye.